Today we got an X370 Gaming Pro from MSI on the table. Got out of eBay. Story is as follows. A guy bought it on eBay himself as in working condition and it turned out to be not working. I don't have any further information, probably a no boot. And we're going to start with some um, resistance checks. Just the basic stuff. I'm going to use these screw holes as ground. Let's check them. Are they all connected? Connect to the ground. No, doesn't seem so. Let's find a good ground. Yeah, we can just use these screw holes right there. Maybe they were ground. Well, so I see an adductor here. Around the memory face, that looks good. Another inductor here. Also kilo ohms. Uh, these inductors we need to check from the other side. Linear, linear voltage regulator right here. Should be fine. This inductor we can check here. This is probably um, Ryzen specific. Like the logic of it that is being powered. I think we had this one already. So let's check 3VSB on the PCIe slot. Also good. Let's check right down here. This looks also fine. Um, which one is the first pin of the Super IO? Probably around this one. That is kinda low. We might need to see that if the first pin is actually um, 3 volts. That might be a problem. Um, let's check the basic inputs. This is, I think, either this is 12 or 5 volts. This looks fine. And this is then the other one. This looks fine. This is 3.3 .3 volts. This looks fine. And let's check the CPU. This looks fine. Okay. I'm probably going to switch cameras and we're going to have a look at the Super I.O. chip and see for resistances. So, we are around our Super I.O. now. Um, you can't see the multimeter, I'm just going to tell you the resistances that I see. Let's check some capacitors around here. This looks good. Also kilo ohms. Kilo ohms. I'm just checking by random. This one also has high resistance. So this was the point where I read almost a short, I think, uh, if I actually got my probes right. No, first pin looks good. Probably connected to something else that wasn't. It wasn't the first pin. But our Super IO looks good from resistance wise. We can check this one here at the right as well. This is probably also some regulator. This looks good. These are most of the time the outputs, one of those. Probably the right one. But these also have kilo ohms. Let's check these ca caps here. Okay, this is probably the ground side. This is Kelly Holmes. Well, um, I think we're going to power up this board, put a CPU in it, maybe, maybe not even put a CPU in it, maybe just uh, connect power. And we're going to see what the current draw is. And based on that, I'm either going to put a CPU in it and RAM, and we're going to see what it says. So we now have the board connected. You now see the power supply in the bottom right side. And I'm going to turn it on and we're going to see what the um, standby power draw of this mainboard is going to be. I would expect to be 
what 100 to 300 milliamps around that i don't know how many leds this has this makes a difference also but we're going to see okay we have not even 100 milliamps okay let's see if our um, standby uh, voltage is running Yep, it is running. We have 3.3 almost. That's already a good sign. Um, Spire not getting hot. Nothing hot to the touch. The BIOS doesn't seem to be touched. I don't think anyone has worked on this board before. Um, so that's a good sign. I'm going to pause again. Going to throw a CPU into this, a postcard and some RAM. Be right back. So, we now have a CPU in here, 3500X, 4 gigs of RAM, random ones. We got a post analyzer card. We're going to give some power and I'm going to press the power button right now. Okay, amp draw looks pretty good at 1.73. No postcodes. Might need to do connect it somewhere else. CPU has a little bit of warmth, but we are at a very static 1.7 amps, which I do not like because that seems it got stuck on something. Yeah, the CPU is getting a little bit hot. We're going to power it off once more. Wrecked it to the power button, that's a good sign. Um, let's check the CMOS, how much voltage that has. If it might have gotten stuck somewhere on that. Almost 3 volts. It might be a problem, might not be. Um, let's see if it does something there, but it doesn't seem like it does. Yeah, I'm just trying to find a um, spot where uh, the postcard actually says something. Normally it's the TPM header, so I think we're not even getting a boot out of this one. CPU is getting hot, but the... Amp draw doesn't seem like it's actually working because it's very static. I'm going to turn it off once more. This board, oh, this board even has debug LEDs. I didn't even notice that. Um, let's connect this one up here again. Uh, let's just have a look at these LEDs right here and see what they say seems like it says cpu forever okay um let's re um let's turn it off get the power off uh swap in a different cpu i have a 1500x lying here we can try that one Obviously, I do not know what kind of BIOS is on this, so what will be compatible and what not. But we're just going to try and going to see. Let's see again. Amp draw is a lot more. Interestingly. Oh. Okay, CPU light turned on and off. Board is rebooting by itself. And it turned off. Not going to start again by yourself, are you? Let's try that one more time for ourselves. Okay, it doesn't have a reaction to the power button anymore. Hmm, that's an interesting behavior. Uh, let's turn the power supply off once more.
we're going to drain it by holding the power button down so that the capacitors and everything is going to be drained on the board and what we're going to do is we are going to start a power supply again and see if it has the same reaction I'm still pressing the power button and I'm getting no life out of it at all let's see if our standby supply is running if we haven't lost that oh we it seems like we're not having any supply here anymore Okay, I'm going to quickly check if my wiring is wrong, if anything has loosened up, or if this board actually refuses to do anything. Be right back. So, I have removed the BIOS battery, and we got signs of life again, for whatever reason. So, let's see again. Looking at the post-LEDs. CPU turns on and off. Current is jumping, which is a good sign. CPU again. If we move further, my hand is getting quite warm. CPU turns off again. My hand is burning hot. I have to turn this off. Oh, four amps. Oh, my hands. Ah, seven amps. <laughs> what a mess. Yeah, I think this is turning on actually because my hand was actually burning pretty badly um, I'm going to um, Connect a graphics card to this going to put a cooler on this so I don't have to burn my hands any further and We're going to see this probably posts I think so all what we did so far is to remove the BIOS battery this might have had a stuck BIOS because it has almost 3 volts, but that also might be a problem because um, under load it might have a little bit more drop, but I don't think that the voltage was the problem. I think the BIOS was actually stuck. So, give me a few minutes. I'm going to put the cooler on, uh, going to connect a graphics card, and uh, yeah, we're going to see what there will be next. And we are back. As you can see, a very healthy 8 amp draw, but we have picture. Very blurry picture because of my cam, but it actually is running. Because it's very, very close to the maximum of amps that this power supply can uh, supply, I'm going to be turning it off. I'm going to be connecting. Uh, Windows drive and going to be connecting a normal ATX power supply and I'm going to see you again when I have Windows this thing running we're going to see and I'm going to see about um, with the battery well well with the cell probably going to just replace it and going to see how it behaves after that for now I'm going to get set up so to wrap up this video we got four dims connected. We, as you can see in the bottom right, we booted into our system. We got 20 gigs of RAM. We got a 2600 Ryzen 5. And we're updating um, the chipset drivers on this. So, this thing is running. This thing works. I think the problem was that um, the first owner sold it actually working and the second owner had something wrong with it. I don't know what set up something wrong and actually got the BIOS stuck or killed the BIOS. And we got it working with just removing the bat battery. I flashed the BIOS since, seems to work just normally fine. And yeah, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's 
this is a very lucky find to be honest. There's not too many that just need a BIOS reset by the battery. If it's BIOS most of the time you need to take the chip off, flash it, something like that. But we got lucky on this one. I'm going to wrap up some tests. As you can see I already got Ethernet also connected. Maybe you can't see it's pretty small, yeah. I got Ethernet connected, got some USB devices, make some basic checks. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If anything else pops out, I'm going to inform you and thank you for watching.